Since I was a young teenager, I've always been a big fan of anime. I started off watching it like most people did in America in the early 2000s, which was Late Night on Adult Swim. I got into a bunch of the highly acclaimed ones like Samurai Champloo, Naruto, and a bunch more. As my interest peaked, I figured I'd try to expand my taste by going on the internet and finding more than just the super popular ones to watch. And to my surprise, the websites where I could get these animes for free only had the subbed or subtitled version. Even though I was hesitant, I still gave them a go and I found that the majority of the time I actually preferred the subbed version of the anime more than the dub. Through the years I had picked up on a couple Japanese words that pretty much everyone who's watched anime for a decent amount of time has picked up on like Nani, Baka, Sayonara, Konnichiwa, but even after years my knowledge of the Japanese language never stretched farther than that. If my plan later in life is to go live in Japan for at least one or two months, I'm probably going to to have to understand Japanese pretty fluently. And on top of that, wouldn't it be dope if I could get to the point where I could watch anime in the Japanese language, but without subtitles? And could I do it in just 30 days? And so that's how this challenge was born. The rules were simple. Learn as much Japanese as I could in 30 days and conduct a test at the end using an anime episode without subtitles to see how much I could actually understand. With that all out of the way, let's get into this. My first task was to figure out where to start. With so many resources and YouTube videos on the subject, it was a little overwhelming, so I took to my Instagram story to get some help. I got a few replies that all said similar things. Start by learning hiragana and katakana, then get into the Genki textbooks. You see, the modern Japanese writing system has three different writing scripts. Hiragana, Katagana, and Kanji. Basically, all you need to know is that Kanji is a logographic script used by combining usually more than one Hiragana character, and Katakana is usually used for foreign names of things, but it's used pretty frequently. So at the very least, to dive into learning this, I needed to learn Hiragana and Katakana. I could deal with learning Kanji after these 30 days. That wasn't part of this challenge. So like the people on Instagram said, I ordered the Genki textbooks. All right, there it is on Amazon, last purchased today. Today, I am pumped to get these, and this might be the first time that I've ever been excited to purchase textbooks. Oh, this is gonna be a process. And I patiently awaited for the day for them to arrive so I could start. I don't have a clue where to even start with all this, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure that out. So the ideal way to memorize these characters is using something called memory devices. Basically, I needed to associate some sort of object with memorizing the character. For example, the hiragana character key looks like a key, and luckily I had found a YouTube video that did just that for both hiragana and katakana. This is gonna be so good. I got into a groove of studying for about 30 minutes every single morning. And after a few days, I had hiragana memorized. July 10th, baby, and we're done with hiragana. If you showed me any of these characters, I could tell you exactly what it was. Still got 25 days to learn Japanese. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. And the same strategy worked very well for katakana. By day 10 or 11, I had both hiragana and katakana fully memorized. Kanji and hiragana done. And we are officially 11 days into the this challenge, so I have to learn how to speak Japanese in 19 days. These next 19 days are gonna be interesting. It was finally time to start diving into those Genki textbook lessons. I knew it would be especially beneficial if I found someone to help explain the lessons further to me as I was going through them, and I figured there would be someone on YouTube doing that already. And there was. There was a guy named Akini Andy, and he had walked through guides to all the lessons of Genki. To replace my habit of memorizing the characters, I now studied my textbook every morning with this dude on YouTube. Hajime mashite, hajime mashite. However, this was a really slow process. Seeing how slowly the progress was going now was kind of getting to me. I was almost halfway through this challenge and I didn't know nearly enough to watch anime without the subtitles. I'm kind of starting to get worried that I'm not going to be able to do this in 30 days. 
But then I got a message on Instagram. It was from one of the people who told me where I should start. Let's just call him Mock. Mock told me he lives in Japan and would help me learn Japanese as well as be my speaking partner in exchange for fitness coaching because I also do that. I'm a fitness coach. This was huge news. To have someone to talk to one on one and actually speak the language out loud was so much more beneficial than just doing these workbook lessons. So we scheduled a call for Discord that would take place in a few nights. In between between our messages in the first call, I thought I'd do more research as to how I could learn more efficiently, and I came across a video by the YouTube channel What I've Learned. In it, he explained that comprehensible input and immersion was actually the best way to learn a language. I'll let him explain it. What's necessary for acquisition is sufficient comprehensible input. Something like this. Ringo taberu. Ringo taberu. Even though you might not know any of the words I just said, you could comprehend the pictures I supplied. And based on that context, you could acquire the meaning of a dingo and taberu. I actually found a YouTube channel dedicated to teaching comprehensible Japanese, and I also listened to podcasts in my spare time to help be more immersed in the language. <laughs> And of course, I was still studying the Genki textbooks during this time, which was definitely helping. At this point, I had developed a bit of an obsession. Any free time I had was usually dedicated to learning more Japanese, and I had a lot of fun doing it too. It felt really good to make that progress, and I started to gain back that motivation. Kokonotsu. Kokonotsu. Musume wa... Then the day came where it was time for me to hop on my first call with Ma. Thanks for doing this with me. It, it's, I think it's going to be a big help. The first call was dedicated mostly to learning better pronunciation. Ka, ki, ku, ke, ko. The one thing I might say is that you don't need to put uh, as much emphasis on the K syllable. Not super helpful for learning how to watch anime without subtitles, but it was still something that I had to learn. We decided that we'd talk once a week, every week from that point onward. But since we didn't end up actually forming the schedule until the later half of the challenge, I only got to speak to him one more time after that. Watashi wa... The days of studying kept flying by, and before I knew it, it was finally the day of the test. <laughs> this is it. This is the day of the test to see if I have actually learned enough Japanese to watch anime without the subtitles. This morning I'm just cooking up some breakfast, as you saw, and I'm listening to a Japanese podcast just to get into the zone. I doubt I'm going to learn anything within this time frame before the test that I'm going to do today, but... It's, it's just worth getting myself into the zone. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. Let's do this. So let me explain to you how I decided to conduct this test. Firstly, the anime I chose. I figured that any anime I had already seen would kind of be cheating since I'd already known what they said in some scenes, so it had to be an anime I'd never seen before. In the end, I ended up going with The Disastrous Life of Psyche K. Not only because I had heard from a few people that it was a pretty good anime, but also because I knew that he attended a high school and the first lessons and conversations in Genki were mainly focused around high school vocabulary, so I thought that that would give me a slight advantage. Okay, so now the test. First, I would watch the anime in Japanese without English subtitles. I could use Japanese subtitles for some extra help, I could stop and start and rewind as much as I wanted, and I could play the anime in a slower speed if needed. I would go line by line trying to discern what they were saying and write down each line in a notebook. I'd then re-watch the episode with English subtitles and see what lines I got right or wrong. Lastly, I'd divide the lines I got right by the total number of lines I had listened to to get the percentage of the anime that I actually understood. So that's what I did, and after this long and tiring process, I finally had my results. This is it guys, you ready for this? <laughs> uh, so based on the calculations I did with all the lines or like partial lines that I understood, after the calculations I found out I understood about 15 to 20 percent. I'd say it's closer to like 15 percent. I'm really not sure if that's good or not for 30 days of learning Japanese. I probably got people in the comments saying that they actually learned Japanese in 30 days, but that's okay. I'm happy with the progress and uh, yeah, it was fun. So am I able to watch anime without subtitles? Well, technically I could, but I wouldn't be able to understand much of it. Although I definitely can understand a lot more than I used to. This was my first time ever trying to learn a language and it was a really fun and eye-opening experience. And even though the challenge is over now, I'm still studying just as much. I don't want to stop until I'm fluent and I know that that could potentially take years, but 
I'm here for it. Thank you to all the patrons on this channel on Patreon. This is a platform where I'm putting out exclusive videos and podcasts you can't find anywhere else. If you want to check that out, the link is in the description, patreon.com slash Cole Hastings. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And as always, mite karete arigato.